All right, hey everybody, it is me for what is going to hopefully be a short video because honestly, uh, there isn't too much that I haven't already covered this week and not too terribly much that I want to cover more than I've already covered. So uh, going to give just a little bit of advice towards um, my opinion of what's pretty good with the Final Fantasy 13 characters, as well as I want to talk a little bit about Lightning's Weapon, because Lightning's Weapon is the first of its kind, and uh, one of the very few that actually uh, is this way. I don't think, actually, in JP, we've had one that has been like this. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, well, boy, oh boy, I hope I can actually find it in Lightning Sword. Now, Lightning Sword has two different iterations. It has the normal one that you can craft, and there's the drop one. And so the drop one is effectively this. This is what it looks like. It's a plus five, it drops from the actual quest, and it has slightly different bonuses for Lightning uh, if it is the dropped plus five version. And so first of all, the thing I want to talk about this is uh, probably some copium for all of my players out there who are going to get unlucky in this. Because I know JP players who got it within 30 attempts, which is incredibly low. Because I know people who burnt uh, tens of thousands of stamina trying to get this thing on JP and just never got it. Uh, it is... A incredibly drop, rare drop rate and it if you don't get it it's okay there are people out there who haven't gotten it have gotten lightning and are surviving plenty fine now there's no doubt in my mind that this is the premium weapon for lightning but this one this special version is effectively more of a how do I say it, it it's it's more of a kind of PvE weapon because the killers on it are not necessarily what you are going to be needing in PvP and I feel like some people will overly and undoubtedly stress way too much about trying to get this for just being completionist sakes and I mean honestly if you are a completionist uh, then it, it, it's just kind of a ooh, ooh, unfortunate for you kind of thing because I can't really help you with that. But this weapon is definitely good, and the Blaze Fire plus 5 Saber uh, does come with a increase of Machine and Undead Killer. Neither of those are really that valuable right now as of JP for PvP, because there aren't any super relevant machines that can't be killed in another way. 2B is old enough at this point that she just doesn't really have great matchups anymore, especially into her opposing elements. That's just a death sentence for her and more of a burden than a benefit for her team. The biggest thing probably is the accuracy increase, which is kind of nice for dealing with evasion, because I think globalers still have some issues with evasions. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's just a overall fine sword. The blaze, the regular blaze fire plus five has generally better attack stats on it. And also, I mean, it does effectively increase Lightning's attack for PvP modes better uh, than the other version, just because it slash, missile, accuracy, increased Lightning attack, and uh, chance that counter does not proc. All three of these things are plenty fine. So the plus five Blaze Saber, it might be a little, it's copium for some and annoying for others when I say this, but it's just an incredibly rare drop. I know plenty of people who got hosed on it and plenty of people who got it after a large number of attempts. So, you know, when you have extra stamina, just throw it towards potentially trying to get it. Uh, and if you don't get it anytime soon, that's the norm. No, and as for the rare people, well, bully for them sort of thing. Anyway, so yeah, that's my take on the Blaze Saber. Now, I've also been getting asked questions about optimal summons for each of the characters. And since Optimus Prime is not in the game, that's a stupid joke, but I said it anyway, because I am confident today. When it, when it comes to dealing with specifically what summons, obviously your team composition is really going to determine where your espers are. I mean, when a physical-based unit comes out, 
it's always Odin. Odin is the first Esper that you are always training with that character because Odin is just the best physical base summon. Same way as when a mage comes out, you're always putting Bahamut on because Bahamut's just one of the strongest ones and it's probably best to get the strongest first. Now I know that people have Esther on global and Esther is very, very strong. And some people have even been saying, well, Lightning's DPS is not as good as Esther. And well, if you have Esther with, uh, <laughs> with Odin and not with Lightning, that's probably gonna make up a fair bit of difference. You can put Chaos Odin on, but remember, Chaos one of Chaos Odin's strengths is being a evasion esper. You might even want to reconsider resetting Chaos Odin to be more of a general good slash esper and less evasion since evasion really isn't a thing, at least on in the future for JP. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not much of a thing, so you can probably shape, safely switch it to just be more DPS. Chaos Odin does not, in my opinion, work as well as regular Odin, but will probably be a good alternative. Now, the other option for those of you who were inclined to potentially plan ahead would be this VC. Yes, it's not maxed for me, but that's okay. As for the Guard Scorpion, the Guard Scorpion is another good Esper to throw on a lightning-based uh, character. It's not as good as Odin. My lightning just personally runs Odin because uh, that's where it fits well. And uh, thematically, of course, Odin should always be on lightning. But yeah, depending on which characters you do want to throw on with different elements, uh, your choices will vary. But this has been my opinion thus far. And yeah, you're just gonna kind of have to, if you're going to keep Odin on Esther, uh, you know, I think Guard Scorpion would be next, or potentially Chaos Odin, and from there, just down the list, going Sword Espers, so you find one you like. But yeah, there's only one true Odin, and as far as I'm concerned, he's still the best in my eyes. Next up, let's talk about Ice, and Ice with... Uh, I mean, the summon of choice right now for most physical tanks is just... Gold Aramon. Gold Aramon is really, really good at what he does and overall pretty nice as a tank expert. There just isn't two ways about it. If you are looking, I mean, you can throw potentially a Ice Bet Esper. I've kind of been working on Glacier, uh, potentially Fenrir as well. Uh, and just for, you know, the other potentially good Espers, uh, here we have. Phoenix, which kind of gives him a little bit more uh, fire resistance, potentially good into a matchup. And of course, Golem is always a consideration. But I mean, you could go with Lamia. It's just DPS wise. I don't think that's the real goal of Snow, uh, even though he can deal some damage. Uh, DPS is always just better. And I'm pretty happy with this current. I can just find the screen. Yeah, it's it's pretty good into some of the matchups where I would be using snow anyway. So that's where I'm generally feeling on that. And uh, coming back, I do have two light teeth now, but we are specifically looking at, and he got unequipped because of the thing, uh, Hope. And as you can see, Hope is just on neither of the teams, partially because Ramza is my 120 support. And uh, just to kind of put him back in, I mean, I'm not even really thinking, uh, this is the first weapon I saw. Yeah, just go with it. Hope is a mage, so just throwing on any mage based Esper, potentially Carbuncle. There's quite a few different Espers that you can throw on him and have decent success. Uh, but of course, uh, Hope is one of the ones that I am least excited about, which means uh, out of the 13 characters, so there in my recommendations for him are just a little bit less if I haven't been using him but yeah lightning always deserves the best I know that lots of global people are Esther fans but honestly the the, the one thing I want to postulate uh, to globalers because I can't test it on E and you guys can write in the comments below about what you would think of this I honestly think that throwing Esther as to being more of a defensive character might be a little bit more interesting of a option because one of the things I hear about her constantly 
very DPS, but she can also be very tanky. Putting her as a kind of soft tank while using lightning with her range capabilities as DPS might be more effective. It'll be early days in for globalers to be trying team composition. But that's kind of where my mind has gone in the first week. Of just being like, hey, let's throw lightning as our DPS and Esther uh, more as a kind of tank that could also do DPS. And then just round that party off with an Orlando in the following week. Or, you know, maybe a healer or something like that. I don't know how successful it would truly be, uh, so I'm going to leave it up for you globalers and your imaginations whether or not you like the idea, but if you do try it, please let me know, and or just let me know what you theoretically think of it. Of course, this is just a theory, it's free advice. So be, of course, courteous as you can be. So thanks for watching, take care, and hopefully this video answered a few questions for some people. And um, for all those who don't have guards, Guard Scorpion, next time he shows up, just get it. If you're a lightning specialist, you really should have gotten it in the first place, maxed it, and living the good life now. See ya.